you know, it's hard sometimes to explain to people you do something. And if you're an inventor or a researcher, there's a lot of time involved in terms of looking at the deeper mechanisms of what you're doing. And it takes time and you have to explain it. And if you're good, you write a book, you do a movie. And I've been very sporadic with putting a lot of different pieces together. And I, I haven't quite done the book and I've got a lot of videos, but I haven't seemed to put it together into a form that people would understand me. For I believe that if they did, they would want to use the tools and participate. But I found that I haven't been that good at explaining what I'm doing. You know, I, I just haven't been able to fit into the society that we have grown up into. When I was going through school, there was something off that I always knew that something was wrong, but I didn't know what it was, but I just sort of felt it and always kept a distance and always wondered why we were doing things in the way we were doing it. It didn't make sense to me. And so for most of my life, I've been on the outside, the fringe, not quite fitting in. And always with this sort of philosophical perplexion around, you know, why are things organized the way they are? Why are we doing things the way we are? And then I, I reached an age at some point where, you know, I, I sort of realized that, well, there's a design, there's something, there's something behind all this. I should say something about, I guess, my research methodology, because we might get these brilliant insights that hit us one moment. We're in shock. It changes our life forever, which does and has occurred. But a lot of times we're getting information from a lots of different places and there's certain teachers that stand out that take us to a place that we couldn't get on our own. And sometimes you know the teacher is a teacher and a lot of times you don't. But I think for all of us, we, we have certain people that stand out in our life. And one of them uh, I'd like to honor is, is the man, Jimmy Townsend, who, like me, was a, a unique individual who didn't quite fit in. And he was an inventor. And he had invented this database called Datamorph that did something I've never seen any software program to do, and that you could link as a user any two bits of information. I don't know if you know much about databases, but it, for the most part, they are programmed in a certain way that you can only link certain things like within categories or whatever methodology they have, but you can't connect anything to anything. So he had done something like way ahead of his time and his, his database was way better than anything out there. But for some reason, he couldn't get people's interest. People were always, were always trying to rip him off or they just discounted what he had. And a lot came due to his strong political beliefs where at the same time of being an inventor, he was a researcher because he could use this database to bring together so many different ideas and people and places and things and that he could see things that other people couldn't. And he started piecing together the world situation and how it had gotten to the way it had. And so he was a teacher for me in many ways, but he, he, was, he was bringing to me a certain understanding of how the world is organized 
that I'd never seen before. And in many ways, I didn't want to believe because it was so, you know, there was, there was this disconnect in the mind of how you thought things were and then how they actually are. And to make that jump is, you know, you really have to look at society very differently. And if no one is believing that, and you're the, you know, one of a few, very few who even have any idea about it, let alone preach to the world, at some point you realize you can't really talk about it. Because if you do, your life will be different. You are going to be attacked. You are going to be run out of town, so to speak, or your reputation killed or killed. And this is what happens to a lot of, let's say, whistleblowers around the world. But there's different levels of whistleblowing. I mean, at every level, it's, there's more safety to speak about. Uh, you can talk about the 1% or you can talk about globalists or you can talk about you know some group in a vague way but as soon as you start getting closer to the top and you get more specific about who these people really are well now you got to deal with a whole new kettle of fish because these people are absolutely ruthless and have spent all of their life and all of their time and all of their technology making the world believe a specific analysis that isn't true, but everyone thinks it's true because they grew up in a society and an educational system that indoctrinated you to believe a certain thing about history. And uh, things ain't quite what they tell you. I say this because if you're a researcher or you're a designer and you're outside of the normal worldview that most people hold, at some point you get pretty isolated. And without that human contact, without that human interaction, our emotional state can have a great deal of effect on us. And I think for a lot of artists and inventors who are outside of the realm of, you know, where most people are thinking, it can be quite a lonely place. And you tend to get a, a much sort of, I guess, a dystopian viewpoint of our society because you're not benefiting from the good things of life. Because you can't communicate with humans anymore. Because whatever is that normal social chit chat kind of conversation that takes place between most people in social situations, it's meaningless. It really becomes meaningless because you see that as being one of the main reasons why we're in the state that we're in. It's like there's a fire in their village and all the homes are at risk, but everyone's at the tavern having a beer, chatting about life. And you come in and you go, there's a fire. And they're like, yeah. And they just keep chatting in the way that they normally do. And, and that's sort of the situation. Like our species is in a, an emergency situation, far worse than what they call talk about climate change, far worse than because, because it's everything. It's everything put together. And then on the other hand, you've got a bunch of insane psychopaths controlling the world banks the IMF, the Federal Reserve, the whole banking industry at the international level is controlled by 
you know, a group of people. And they don't want to be named. They don't want to be seen. They don't want to be identified. But if you go behind 9-11, or you go behind this COVID crisis, or you go behind any major event that has pretty well occurred on this world that's bad for our species or bad for a country or bad for you know us in general, it's because of this group of people that are maneuvering things to set up, you know, a, a real Orwellian horror show for our future generations. And right now it's happening like in front of us. And for me, you know, growing up in pre-computer world and, and watching history as it's been made and seeing, you know, this, 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 I don't know, veil of illusion that covers even the smartest people's eyes. And to, to go like, well, well what, what can I do about it? Like one person in, in the face of Rome or massive government in infrastructures or, you know, when, when the lone freedom fighter is, is faced with the immensity of this, the oppression, the oppressive regime that they're in. You know, it's, it's pretty overwhelming for the most part. So you have to focus your time and your energy into some sort of leverage so that you feel you can do something that's of use. Because at some point you, you go, I don't want to just go along with the, the norm because the norm is leading towards this horrible future. I want to be part of something going towards a, a good future for our species and for you know the, the children, the animals and the trees. To me, the three things that you can't really protect themselves and they're being eradicated in a manner that is just horrible. And so I, I feel like I have to say this at the beginning of, of saying anything around my own work, because the deeper reason is that things are wrong, things are off, things are, 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 are heading towards this cliff. And if we don't do something about it, you know, how can we look at ourselves and go, I, I use my life well? How can we look at ourselves and go, you know, I, I feel good as a human being. Like, I, I can't, I, I have to do something about, you know, once you find out what's actually occurring. But I, I'm not a violent man. And I don't believe that violence is going to work unless you have overwhelming superiority and uh, a real reason for it such as to defend yourself. I look at the story, Lord of the Rings, as a good metaphor for what's occurring right now. Because in Lord of the Rings, there's a defined enemy. There is this dark force that is wanting to control all of Middle Earth and is gathering all of the dark hordes of orcs that are very specifically non-human and they're specifically horrible and they're coming to kill you. So it's, it's very obvious who the enemy is. But in today's world, it's not so obvious who the enemy is. I mean, we used to know who the enemy was, right? It was the Germans and Japanese and the Vietnamese and basically any enemy that was being attacked or destroyed. But these days, terrorists somewhere, Arabs somewhere. But you know, in nearly every movie these days where they're futurizing, a horrible future, the bad guy is always the government 
always. There's always some seedy part of some seedy government that is there behind horrible crimes that we're facing. And I came across a word in the last few years that I've never heard before called statism. And it, it describes like the government as a religion, describes belief in this omnipotent governing body as a religion. And it, you know, kind of hit me going, huh, you know, because a government is basically an infrastructure with people in it. People kind of change, but this infrastructure sort of doesn't. And this infrastructure is set up to get rid of all of the resources that are usually within some geographical area for a small group of people somewhere and to totally control everything about what's occurring. And that's what happened, right? I mean, they've set that up. That's what we were born into. We just didn't know it. So what is the main weapon of this enemy? I think we have to look at the one ring in Lord of the Rings. Because this one ring was at the foundation of what the story is about. The one ring is how Sauron got his power. And Frodo had to throw the one ring into Mount Doom in order to destroy it. And so metaphorically, what is this one ring? And to me, it's usury. If you really look at what usury is and how it creates death and how it's impossible to give back the interest on the interest, at some point you're in this real bad cycle of you're repaying the loan, but all you're doing is you're repaying the interest. And you're giving interest on, you're, you're paying back interest on interest and, and you're screwed. And this is happening all across the planet. And there is a reason it was outlawed in the Bible. And if you look at the history of this concept and what happens to societies that get completely screwed because of this, and that's what we're in right now. And that's what isn't being addressed. Because those who don't want to be named don't want the cat out of the bag in terms of what is actually occurring on this planet at this time.